I'm really excited for these guys. I'm excited that we have some games at home. I, I sure hope people uh, and our fans come out and check these guys out because, you know, they're 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 playing with some inspiration. They're 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 playing well, and uh, you know, we need to create a great home field advantage. No, oh, I love this guy. That was Lance Leipold, head coach of the Kansas Jayhawks. They're three and zero. Oh. <laughs> Kansas, 3-0. and Take down Houston, 48-30. Folks, it's hard, to, it's hard to overstate how amazing this is. Lance Leipold is doing God's work in Lawrence, Kansas. All right. First, to understand how amazing 3-0 is for Kansas, you've got to like just think back a little bit in, in, in recent vintage. They were 3-27 in their last 30 games. 30 games. Right? So, like, they were at the depths of the pit of the Power Five. All right? When you said, like, who's the worst team in the Power Five? For a long time, you just be like, Kansas. Boom. For some times, it was like Rutgers uh, was down there. Unfortunately, like, like right now, you're like, uh, Colorado is probably down there. It's they 3-27 the, and 27 in their last 30 games. But here's the thing. We should have known that something was brewing. This didn't come out of nowhere, and it rarely does. Why? Because there is... There is a pattern to how you build a program, okay? There's a pattern to how you take a program that is in the weeds, in the pit of college football, and how you bring them out of that pit. Here, here's how the pattern goes. And this is it goes all the way back to you know Joe Paterno and Bobby Bowden. They would talk about this. They would talk about, listen, if you take over a program like that that's highly developmental, you're going to lose big. But they don't end it right there. You don't just lose big, okay? You don't just sit there and get your teeth kicked in. Guess what? You lose big, and then if you're doing the right things, and if you're getting better, you'll eventually lose small. This is the most important step, and it's the step that nobody wants to take and that everybody jumps. Nobody has the presence, or excuse me, the, pre, uh, the, the, the perseverance or, or, or the stamina or the willpower to go from step one to step two. They all want to go to step three. You've got to lose big before you're ever going to lose small. You're going to lose small before you ever take that step that everybody wants to take, which is to win small. See, everyone just wants to get to that point where they're winning, but what they don't understand is that there is a step before that. If you're going to lose big, you're going to lose small if and only if you're doing the right things. You know how, how, how maddening that must be? You know how maddening it must be when you're in the throes of 3-27 and 27 in your last 30 and you realize that, you know what, we're doing the right things. We're getting better. Everyone else might not see it, but we know we're getting better. And we have the perseverance and the stamina to see this through. They took that step late last year, folks. They beat Texas and then lost by 3 to TCU and by 6 to West Virginia. They lost small. They lost small. They stole one against Texas, and all the focus went to Texas because that's what we do in college football. We take a major brand. We take the ones that we always talk about, and then we we inundate the fan bases with just content about those places. Texas lost. Texas lost. Texas, Texas, Sark, back. Are they? Nah. Blah. And we never just peek under the covers and you say to yourself, Hey, you know that Texas that Texas team? They lost to a team that's getting better. Kansas, they took the step. And they took the steps necessary to get to where they're starting to go, which is from winning small to potentially winning big. They're 3-0 and with two wins on the road. Two wins on the road. So there's the track, folks. You're going to lose big before you can ever lose small. That's the most important step. Then you're going to lose small before you can ever win small. It's an important step. You're going to win small before you're ever going to win big. And this is an important lesson, folks. This is an important time in college football because right now we have a lot of programs in the country that just think, 
you know what? It's white flag time. It's never going to happen here. We're never going to return to our glory days. We might have been great once, but we're never going to return to our glory days. Well, guess what? Kansas is proving you wrong. Lance Leipold is proving you wrong. The per- perseverance of taking step two is proving you wrong. Okay, so if you're in one of those pits, what do you learn from Kansas's 3-0? What do you learn from Lance Leipold and what he's doing with the Jayhawks? Well, you learn four lessons, okay, folks? These are four lessons, and if you're in one of those pits, you better write these down. First and foremost, you better know where you're at. You better be realistic with yourself and know how far in the pit you are. How deep is it? Because if you don't define that clearly, if you aren't honest with yourself about where your program is, then you're going to think that you're a week or two away from winning small. And at some places, that just ain't the case. That just ain't the case. And it's going to take a lot of pain and effort and sweat and turmoil to get to a place where you can even just lose small by three to TCU or by six to West Virginia before you can win small. Three games to open this year like Kansas. So you better clearly define and be honest with where you're at. Now it comes to step two. Know where you want to go and be honest about where you're going. Just like I talked to you about, you've got to understand that starting to lose small can be growth. You can't just throw your hands up and say, you know what, I'm out, parachute. We've got to be winning or I'm out. So you've got to understand the rungs on the ladder that you've got to step on in order to get yourself out of that pit. And you better be honest with yourself about that. Know where you want to go. Clearly define goals along the way. And you better know exactly how you're going to get there. You better know. That means that you better have an identity of how you recruit. You better have an identity of how you play. You better have an identity of how you go about your business in the locker room and in the classroom. As a program, you better have an identity. And that identity better have all the chips in the middle of the table from everybody around the program. That's the most important part. You... If you don't know how you're going to get there, then everybody has a thought. We better do this. We got to throw more. We got to run more. We got to spin more. We got to recruit differently. No, 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 no. There can't be little fractures like that. You got to know exactly how you're going to get there. And everybody's got to believe. Everybody. The players got to believe it. They got to know exactly what they're doing day in and day out. The training staff, the nutrition staff, the strength staff, the academic staff. The athletic director, the chancellor, the board of regents, the major donors. Everybody better be pushing in the same direction. Why? Because you know where you're going. You know who you're, uh, what your identity is. And then the fourth step, folks, you better understand that you've got to push the envelope on innovation. You've got to evolve with college football as college football evolves. You can't just look back in the rearview mirror and say, we used to be great. Let's do it how we used to do it. Guess why? Guess why? College football is changing, and it has changed. And you better evolve, or you will get past, and you will stay past. Here's an example. Folks, if you're going to be really good in college football, you better do something really innovative in recruiting. I believe that a team that is in in the the pit of college football should have three recruiting departments. Not one, three. Why do you need three, Joel? Well, because you're recruiting three very different types of players. What do you mean? Well, let me explain. First and foremost, you better relentlessly recruit high school athletes. You better identify guys that you can develop and will buy into your program, and you better relentlessly recruit them and pursue them daily. Calls. Every time that it's legal to call them, you call them. Relentlessly pursue those guys. That's why you need a whole department just recruiting high school athletes. Your coaching staff, relentlessly recruiting high school athletes. Relentlessly identifying the ones that are realistic for you to get and that will realistically help you start to win football games. Then you've got to have a second recruiting department. Who who are you recruiting there? Transfer athletes. You've got to identify the players 
that can come in and help you right away in the spots that you need help. And it's not just about, hey, that guy's in the porter and that guy's in the porter. You've got to understand and identify what types of guys will fit in your program to come in and actually help you. It's not enough just to have a transfer. You've got to have the right transfers. And by the way, if you don't want to play the transfer game, you're going to get passed up. Oklahoma is a great example. Michigan State is a great example. USC is a great example. These are teams that identified needs and went out and attacked them with players that they knew were going to identify with their system and buy into their product. So that's the second recruiting department. And then here's the third recruiting department, and this might be the most important one. Who's left, Joel? Who's left for the third recruiting department? Your own players, because they can get up and walk out anytime they want. So you better relentlessly recruit and pursue your own players to keep your core. If you're not doing that, then you're going to rebuild your team every year. And it's not about, at that point, having good culture or bad culture. You've got no culture. You've got no culture at all. It's transient. It just changes year after year. You better be on the phone texting your players. How you doing? How are things at home? How's school? How can I help you? Because that's the only way that you're going to build a family environment and a locker room that cares for one another and can also help you recruit those athletes that you need from the outside into your locker room that can help you win football games. You want to change your locker room? Relentlessly pursue your own players. They're the ones that need you the most. And they're the ones that are going to help you the most day in and day out. So there you go, folks. It's not the end of the world if you're in the pit of college football. And there are several programs that are there right now. It can be done. And Lance Leipold is proving that at Kansas with his 3-0 start. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoy that clip, make sure you click subscribe somewhere down here. From game highlights to exclusive interviews and rankings, we've got everything you need as a college football fan right here, College Football on Fox.